In Washington, Eric Severide has been watching these four programs with you. And we turn to him now for his thoughts on the Warren Commission and its work. When this reporter returned home after the first year of World War II in Europe, I made a few speeches to American groups, the intelligent, middle-class, town hall kind of audience. But almost invariably, some man or group of men would get me aside after the speech and say, in effect, now tell us the real lowdown. This was my first adult encounter with that strain of permanent skepticism about what they read or hear that runs through so much of the American people. This distrust that governs people's feelings toward government and public events more than their feelings toward one another in their daily life. Part of the impulse is simply that traditional Yankee horse trader desire not to be taken in. Part is the wish to be personally in the know, one up on the other fellow. But this automatic reaction that there must be conspiracy somewhere, the prevalence of this devil theory of politics, this probably has increased among us, as Professor Commager suggests, as a result of World War II and the Cold War that followed. Roosevelt must have sold out East Europe at Yalta, so many people thought. Obscure Reds in the State Department, teachers and writers here and there, must have delivered vast China to communist hands. Indeed, one or two otherwise reputable personages argued that Roosevelt conspired with the Japanese to bring about the Pearl Harbor attack. What fed the conspiracy notion about the Kennedy assassination among many Americans was the sheer incongruity of the affair. All that power and majesty wiped out in an instant by one skinny, weak-chinned little character. It was like believing that the Queen Mary had sunk without a trace because of a log floating somewhere in the Atlantic or that ATT stock had fallen to zero because a drunk somewhere tore out his telephone wires. But this almost unbelievable incongruity has characterized nearly every one of the assassinations and attempted assassinations of American presidents. Deranged little men killed Lincoln, Garfield, McKinley, tried to kill President Theodore and Franklin Roosevelt. Only the Puerto Rican attempt on President Truman represented a real conspiracy. There are still people who think Adolf Hitler is alive, people who think the so-called learned elders of Zion are engaged in a Jewish plot to control the world. The passage of years, the failure of anybody anywhere to come up with real evidence does not shake the people's illusions. And so, three and a half years later, there are people who still think some group of men are living somewhere, carrying in their breasts the most explosive secret conceivable, knowledge of a plot to kill Mr. Kennedy. These imagined men supposedly go about their lives under iron self-discipline, never falling out with each other, never giving out a hint of suspicion to anyone else. And nearly three years after the Warren Inquiry finished its painful and onerous work, there are not only the serious critics who point to the various mistakes of commission or omission, mistakes of a consequence one can only guess at, and of a kind that have probably plagued every lengthy, voluminous official investigation ever staged, there are also people who think the commission itself was a conspiracy to cover up something. In the first place, it would be utterly impossible in the American arena of a fierce and free press and politics to conceal a conspiracy among so many individuals who live in the public eye. In the second place, the deepest allegiance of men like Chief Justice Warren or a John McCloy does not lie with any president, political party, or current cause. It lies with history, their name and place in history. That is all they live for in their later years. If they knowingly suppressed or distorted decisive evidence about such an event as a presidential murder, their descendants would bear accursed names forever. The notion that they would do such a thing is idiotic. This is Eric Severide in Washington. We'll be back in a moment. Longhorns come to Marlboro Country. Marlboro Longhorns. New extra long Marlboro 100s. Big gold pack. Big flavor too. In the new longer Marlboro. Flavor all the way. Marlboro 100s. Extra long so you can spend a little more time in Marlboro country. 